Assalamu alaikum wa and welcome to a brief tutorial to allow you to create shortcuts for diacritics for Arabic transliteration on Microsoft Word. This is something which a number of students have asked me to help them with and um, instead of going through it in class uh, what I'm hoping to do is that uh, I'm going to create a one-time tutorial which hopefully can be uh, used by uh, my own students but by plenty of other people uh, beyond that. Firstly, just a brief word about Arabic translation. Uh, this is naturally a means of uh, writing Arabic in English script. So, for example, uh, you have two broad modes of transliteration, um, simple transliteration and full transliteration. So let me give some examples of simple transliteration. I've got a Microsoft Word open in front of me and you can follow on the screen. So an example of the word book in Arabic, kitab, would be in simple transliteration written in this way. So kitab or uh, sayyara would be written in this way for car. If we wanted to say uh, al arabiya that would be written in this way, lugha al Arabia. And in simple translation, sometimes they use the ayn and sometimes they'll use an open, uh, so open quotes. So obviously, in, these are generally italicized um, when they are written as simple translation. So that's simple translation. It doesn't use diacritics. As I mentioned, you can use the open quotes. Um, I think that's quite common. It's, that can also be used in um, full translation, but it's more common in full translation to use the ayn uh, and we'll look at that now. So full transliteration uh, examples would be, let's take the same exact examples. Kitab would be written with an A with a, a sort of diacritical mark on top. Macron. Sayyara would similarly be uh, with A with a diacritical mark. Let's do something which has um, perhaps some other uh, letters as well. So the Amen or, or in Arabic it says Amin would be written in this way. I've done that deliberately to have it in the A capitalized. If we think about a word like hadith, if it's transliterated fully, it would look like that. A word like walam would be written like this. So as you can see, what I've done is I'm typing, I've got these shortcuts ready and it allows me to type straight away. Now, what I'm hoping to achieve over the course of uh, this brief tutorial is uh, to allow you to write in these shortcuts, uh, introduce these shortcuts into Microsoft Word um, or potentially other sort of systems that you use. I, as a word processor, use Microsoft Word. The system that I'm using currently is Microsoft Word 2016, as far as I understand. So we'll have a look at how to create these shortcuts in just a moment. But before that, I think I should speak briefly about Unicode fonts. So Unicode fonts are um, certain fonts that have a character set which includes uh, these kinds of special characters, the the with a dot underneath, a with a macron, uh, the i with a macron, etc. And so not all fonts contain these special characters. And so uh, when you're writing, when you're using transliteration, it makes sense to try and use Unicode fonts. What this allows for is for these um, sorts of words to be converted to other um, fonts, other Unicode fonts, and they'll maintain the special characters. So I've just changed that to Calibri from Gentium. Gentium is kind of my default go-to. Um, if I go, and you can see they all still have, um, sorry, I, for some reason this has lost the A. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. Um, so let me try that once more. I'll shift that to another font. Arial should also be Unicode. There you are. Times New Roman is another standard Unicode font. And you can see they translate, as it were, from a one Unicode font to another without difficulty. And I suspect, I mean, um, publishers sometimes actually insist that you use a Unicode font these days. I assume that that's because it can actually be put into a typeset format relatively easily. Um, so that's just something on Unicode fonts and you should use Unicode fonts um, if you're doing transliteration. The other thing I would say uh, is that um, you know, Calibri, Arial, Times New Roman are widely available. Gentium is um, a free Unicode font. As far as I know, it's a free uh, font that's used um, by Brill, the publishers. Uh, it's the font, as far as I know, that's used for the Encyclopedia of Islam. Now, let's actually look at how to create these shortcuts. So what I've got is AIU for the uh, Alif Mad, uh, Ya Mad, and Wa Mad. And of course, you have the lowercase versions, which would be just to give uh, the full version, AIU. And here again, you have, um, these are very often to use a uh, sort of Tajweed term. 
uh, though not universally the case. So this is da, this is ha, which is not mufakham. Sad, da, and dha. So these um, sort of um, five uh, ha are basically special characters in English. I'm just going to create the uh, lowercase version of it. So this is, of course, fairly straightforward for me because I have them already installed. And this is Ain and Hamza. Ain is the one which is sort of the first one over here. Hamza is uh, this one. And um, as I've mentioned, sometimes it's used in this way as well. Um, lowercase, uh, sorry, just using uh, open quote, uh, close quote. Um, these are single quotes. Um, so uh, I guess uh, the close quote would also be an apostrophe. And I will skip the example words. I've given a few already above. So let me now look at the um, actual uh, symbols uh, that need to be inserted. So um, usually in the uh, ribbon on top, you'll need to go to insert the tab which says insert and then you go to symbol. Now you can of course just insert the symbol in question but uh, you know I've not used them uh, recently because I've got these sh shortcuts. So let me quickly just show you how to install a shortcut. So what you would need to do is go to in the ribbon on top you go to the insert tab um, and then you go to symbol. You know, very often if you've used a symbol recently, you could just click it and it will show up here. So I'll just give a quick example. This is um, a S with a Siddala. It's a kind of Turkish sh sound. And, um, you know, I've just clicked that and that's shown up here. Let me delete that very quickly. But otherwise, you go to more symbols. And this is where I'm going to try to create uh, sort of some of these uh, shortcuts. As you've seen, I've already got these shortcuts installed on my system, but I'll show you how to uh, install them on your own system. So firstly, it's gone to normal text over here in, in the font. Because I just clicked the S with the Cedilla, it's um, sort of gone to show that straight away. But what you'll see is you'll find that AIU uh, around here as well. What you're looking for really is this, but for A. And so if it's E, uh, you can go back and you can probably find it for A and there you are. So you've got the A that's just at the top of the normal text um, sort of selection. So here's the normal text selection. You've got A uh, uppercase, A lowercase. You can just click insert and it will insert that into the document. But alternatively, if you want to create a shortcut key, you click over here. And you can actually see that I've already created all of these shortcut keys. But let me just show you how this is done. You click the shortcut key. You've got the command, uh, the current key. Uh, I'm basically going to reinsert this as the current key. And what you can see, I mean, uh, you can choose what you prefer uh, as a shortcut key. But in my case, I've basically, uh, Shift A is the natural choice for that particular letter. But because I've got a macro and I've added one of the components, so I've basically used Alt. Um, and as far as I know, it wasn't taken previously. And most of these keys were not previously taken. I think one happened to be taken, but I overwrote that. So what I'll do here is, again, Shift Alt A, and it's saying currently it's assigned to this very character. And if I click Assign, it will basically override whatever it's currently assigned to, and it will create this as the not, you know, the new shortcut key. So I've done that for um, uh, A capitalized with a macron. And here, of course, you've got exactly the same for A uh, lowercase. Um, so the only difference is it doesn't have a shift. And again, it says currently assigned to because I've previously assigned it, but I'm just overwriting that just to show you how it's done. So the same principle applies for, you've got A over here, and if you go down uh, across, you've got I over here. So you've got I there, I there. Exactly the same sort of principle. You can see I've given the shortcut key Alt-I. You can choose what uh, you think is most suitable. After this, you'll find U at some point, and here you find U. Again, you'll see I've given Alt-Shift-U, and for the lowercase version, just Alt-U. So that's the um, sort of A-I-U, the long, uh, long vowels, uh, uh, e u. After this, what is usually found is the Ayn and the Hamza. So here, if you look, you've got, that's probably, yeah, that's probably open quote, close quote. But what you're after um, is, you know, these special characters, so modified letter, uh, right half ring. And you want the one which is somewhat sort of like raised. You also have this one, which is lower, but the raised one is the one you're after. So this is a Hamza and this is an ayn and you can see i've actually just just sort of allocated a bit of a random for me this is alt uh, backslash and the ayn is alt forward slash and on my keyboard they're kind of on opposing sides of the keyboard so that's hamza ayn we've done a i u and then we're looking for sadda baba and ha those are the ones with the dots underneath so you just keep scrolling down 
until you see something with dots underneath. So I, I can see W with dot underneath, just north of that, and you can see how with a dot underneath. Is that a dot? I do believe that's the dot underneath. Uh, and it is because I've got my shortcut key already. So here it's saying Latin capital letter H with a dot below. D would be the first of those. You can see they will all be in sequence. It's A uh, and then you uh, A doesn't happen to have exactly a dot underneath, but D with a dot underneath. You can see what I've done is Alt D. And for the capital version, I've done Shift. And for the lowercase version, I've done uh, lowercase. So again, you can choose what is most suitable for you. Uh, H, you can see I've done exactly the same. Uh, same principle applying. So, bad uh, ha, and then you have um, after ha sab and ba, and then la. So sad is over here. You can see I've got alt uh, as my kind of go-to alt shift t for the ba, alt t for the lowercase la, and then finally la and la, and that basically covers everything. Uh, and I think that that uh, inshallah is sufficient. Um, I'm going to now just go back and write a few examples. I mean, we've seen this already, and it's just uh, you'll get an idea of how rapidly this can be done. Um, if I say, for example, the um, phrase that is recited after the Prophet's name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that would be Sallallahu I think. Or if we do, um, uh, let me think of something which has la, or, or actually sabba um, baba, saida, sorry, saida, ala mimbar, for sort of climbed onto the mimbar. Okay, sorry, that should all be italicized. Okay, um, so. Now, hopefully, you know how to create uh, shortcut keys. Um, I may try and create a, a Mac version of this at some point, but I think, uh, in principle, it will be very similar um, to uh, the PC version. I hope this has been useful, inshallah. You can start sharing now. And uh, inshallah, um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله